Hey guys, today we're going to talk about how to connect your bank and credit card feeds inside QuickBooks Online. I realize there's been a lot of videos made about this particular process, but we get a lot of questions from our own clients about this, and we want to explain it our way. We're big believers in this process. This is the single biggest time saver you'll have when it comes to your accounting. It will make your life so much easier. If you have an accountant who does not have this turned on right now, then people have no idea what they're doing. Um, this is the most important thing for them to be doing is this and it will save them a ton of time. So if you're doing your accounting yourself, for sure do this process. If someone else is doing your accounting for them, for you, then really encourage them to turn this on because it's such a huge time saver and time is money, right? Okay, so let's dive into this. So by the end of this video, my goal is that you will know how to do this, you'll know why to do this, and you'll be committed to doing it because it's such a big time saver. So if I'm in the, if I'm in like QuickBooks, this is where the banking center is over here on the left. You see where it says banking and I'm just going to click on where it says banking. And this is the screen that it will take me to if I haven't yet connected any accounts. Now, one thing you need to know is when you go in to connect the account, it's going to expect you to map to accounts that are already in your chart of accounts. If you haven't set it up yet, you'll have to kind of like back out of the system and go back in and do this. So let me encourage you to do this right now. So what you need to do is you need to come down here to accounting, click on chart of accounts, and you need to set up a account for every single one of your bank accounts and credit cards that are that you're, that are business accounts that you're going to be using. So this is how you're going to do that. You can come up here to where it says new and you're going to say account type. We're going to start with bank. So account type is bank and I know I have a checking account and so I'm going to say um, Wells. Fargo checking and FYI, um, best practice as far as we're concerned is to always add the last four digits of the account and you'll see why in just a minute, but there's a million reasons why, but you'll see some good reasons why in just a minute. So this is how I would name this. I would name it Wells Fargo checking, save and close. And let's say that I had another savings account. I would do that same process. I would say, um, I would say bank account again, and then I would choose a savings account and then I would name it the same thing. And then I would do the same thing for credit cards. Only I would choose credit card type and you know, credit cards, the only option you have. So then it would say like Amex, um, four Oh eight. Okay. So that would be another one. So that that's how this process would look. So the first thing you need to do is go into your chart of accounts. Now I have a gazillion list here just cause this is a sandbox that we play around with all the time, but you won't have this many in here, but go through and make sure that you have created a bank account or credit card for every single account that you're going to be syncing. So that's the first step. The second step is to actually go back to this bank feed center. And if you haven't done anything yet, it's going to have this button that says connect an account. And you're just going to start typing up here, the name of the bank that you're banking with. So I'm going to start with the Wells Fargo account. And it's now it's just going to, you're going to follow prompts. And honestly, this is going to be slightly different for every bank at this point, like QuickBooks starts talking to the bank portals and this actual interface is going to look slightly different depending on which one you're setting up. So just follow the prompts. So continue. And then it's going to ask for my username and password and like, do not be alarmed. This is not something that like they, they keep with a bunch of like people over in India who can all see like what your bank accounts and credit cards. This, this isn't stored in like a spreadsheet somewhere like this, this portal, this interface is a very safe place to put your credentials in and to move forward in this process. So I'm going to put in the information that I'm going to say, sign on. And then it's going to think about it for a minute and then it may say that you have to have some additional security passcode to verify your identity. You're just going to say continue. So in this particular login, this particular set of books has like all of these different accounts. So it looks like we have one, two, three, four, four like bank accounts and one credit business credit card account that are all synced that are all part of this particular thing. So it's going to ask me like what I want to what I want to sync. Now, when I was setting up like the chart of accounts, I only actually set up like one for the, I got it set up any of these. So I'm going to leave them off for now. So it doesn't stall the process. So I'm going to tell it to sync this one, but hopefully, and you can see, remember how I told you that you wanted the last four digits here. This is part of the reason why, like I can see that this is the account I want because statements and all of this other stuff will always kind of give you the last four digits. And so I know exactly which one I need because of these last four digits. So I'm going to select that one and it's going to say, if you select this, then it will also, um, like it will also 
um, as these statements become available, they'll also be pulled into QuickBooks, which is nifty and saves you time. So if this option is available, then select it. And then it will also, you have the option of, of having it like notify you if other accounts become um, like come online. So keep in mind, this is Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo is a great bank for banking with QuickBooks online. Like not all banks are created equal when it comes to the way to interact with QuickBooks. Um, credit unions, like especially local credit unions, can be really problematic. Um, like truly, when I say I would not bank with a bank that did not have QuickBooks integration, I mean it with everything in my heart because the time investment of entering everything by hand is so much more than just having it sync that I would not bank with a credit card or a, I would not bank with any credit card bank or credit union that did not sync with QuickBooks online. So I'm actually just going to unplug, unclick that for now. And I'm going to say continue. I would probably leave that clicked, by the way, if I was doing this for realsies, for realsies. Then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click this box that says I have read and accepted the terms and conditions, even though I didn't read it. And then I'm going to say connect account information. All right. So it's going to think about it for a minute. And then it's going to bring up a page that will basically say, hey, these are the accounts that we found. And what? how do you want this to map? Okay. So this is where the fact that I've already set this up is really important. If I hadn't set them up in QuickBooks already in my chart of accounts, when it comes to this part, the only options it will give me are accounts that are already in there. So for example, this one is one that I want to sync. Which accounts do you want to connect? I scroll through this list and you can see, well, there's a gazillion accounts here, but that's because I showed you before there was a gazillion accounts in here. But the only ones available to me are um, those ones. Now, if you haven't set it up before, so remember I told you that like life is so wonderful when you um, put in the last four digits, because here I can see, I can see exactly which one I want to sync to, this one. Now, if you did not do that step beforehand where you set up the accounts that you're going to be syncing to, you do have the option of adding this new on the fly. So I'm going to show you how this one works as well. Okay. So I go through this list and I see that there's nothing there that I like. It's just like, I forgot this one or I wasn't ready for this one. So I'm going to say add new and it's going to bring up um, another page that looks just like the one we were just on. So I'm going to say bank and I'm going to say checking and I'm going to actually, I'm a little surprised to see this add new because a minute ago when I did this process, it wasn't there. So remember how a minute ago I told you that you'd have to go back out? Well, it's making a liar of me, and it shouldn't do that because that's just mean. But um, I'm glad to see that that button's there because I was, like, annoyed that it wasn't. So I'm going to say um, another Wells Fargo checking. And, again, this is the same. Like, this is – I might call this, like, Wells Fargo operating account. Um, sometimes it's Wells Fargo operating account. It's good to have, like, um, descriptive names if it makes sense. But the most important thing is really, like – um, these last four digits will be such such a saver for you. So 1343, save and close, and you can see 1343. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna add all of these. So real quick, I'm gonna show you this one also. Like this one is actually a credit card, not a bank account. So if I was coming in here, I would actually say add new, but I would say add credit card. And same thing, I would say Wells Fargo credit card, I would put the last four digits, but for now, I'm just going to leave it blank. Now, this is really important. It's now going to ask you like how far back you want to pull transactions in. Um, if you like have done all your accounting up through the end of the year, for example, and you don't want a bunch of duplicate stuff, just like tell it not to pull in from that far back. Now, again, every bank portal is different. Some of them will only let you pull in for the last 90 days. Some of them will let you go back as far as you want to. Um, so go back as far as you need to. Hopefully, if, if it won't let you pull in transactions, you can always go to the bank portal and you can like download transactions usually and upload them in. So in this case, I'm going to say that I want to see, I, I just want to see transactions as of the beginning of this year. Okay. And then I'm going to say, um, oh, see, like after you say something there at all, it's like, it like forces you to commit. So I'm just going to go ahead and set it up. So, um, she forgot to look at the last four numbers of that. So Wells Fargo Visa. Um, I'm just going to say 999 now, and I'm going to show you how to change this if you also did that same thing. So this is how it's set up right now. It's actually saved in there, so I can't save that yet. So 9862 is what I want to do. So I'm going to say connect. And it will do its thing. So what it's doing right now is it's going on, and it is like, downloading all of those transactions into the bank feed. 
so that I, again, can save myself all kinds of time when I'm doing this in the future. And I will like be so happy and my life will be great. And I'll never have problems or woes again. Like that's how powerful it all is for reals. So you see that it's all right. So it, and this is, this is also kind of cool. I haven't seen it do this before, but like, it's like kind of attempting to kind of show me where my money has been going, which is nice. How nice of it. I'm just going to say, remind me later. Cause I don't need that right now. Okay. So now that these are all in here, we go to the banking center and now across the top, you'll see, these are all the accounts that I've already edited, edited. And now that they're in here. So whichever box I'm clicking on, this is what all the transactions are below. And you see, I now have like many, 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 maybe even hundreds of transactions that are now sitting here with all kinds of data that I don't have to hand enter anymore. And all I have to really do is worry about how I want it coded because they're all in here now. It's such a beautiful thing. Now I want to show you, remember that Visa card that we just named nine, 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 whatever. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to click on this little, um, like pencil thing here. And I'm going to say that I want to edit this account info. And I'm going to say nine, eight, oops, Wells Fargo Visa 9862. Okay. So that's how I'm going to edit it. Now, also, if you ever want to disconnect it, so it's no longer running through this bank feed, um, you see here at the bottom where it says disconnect this account on save, you would just click this button and then it would like disappear from here and it would stop pulling on the transaction. But for now I'm going to say save and close and you see this updates and, um, it's ready to roll. So I'm going to show you what happens when I do say that, um, disconnect on save. I say save and close and it disappears and all the transactions associated with it that had not yet been accepted into QuickBooks. So if you like coded them and hit this like accept or add, they would still be there. But if they're just sitting here in the holding tank, then they won't be there. So you're going to go through the same process with all of your bank accounts and all of your credit cards until they're all synced. Um, if you're adding ones after the fact, this is how you trigger this process as you come up here and you say, um, link an account. And then that's how you'll start this process again. So any questions? Sorry, I can't answer them on the fly, but hopefully you feel ready and empowered to do this process on your own.